So here we are in Stornoway. It's been a lovely hot day and we've been aboard Ammonite, a Herd 23, sailed by Gerald Hale, brought her up from the East Coast. He's a classic bloke on a classic boat and we've been here sailing with him. Now he's going to play us a tune. Slow welcome to Ammonite. Ammonite's a herd 23 and uh, I was reminiscing earlier about the Old Gaffers Association and uh, the, the, the comments and thoughts that there's nothing naffer than a plastic gaffer. Well, I think Ammonite's here to disprove that, although she is a, a glass fibre hull, very heavily laid up. She's um, pretty much a wooden boat and I've got um, three types of as yet unidentified um, fungus I suppose it is. Um, I've got a sort of rampant sort of redhead type um, fungus growing in one locker and on, in the other locker there's uh, they're like um, well they're, they're like uh, shells um, solid shells um, and they stick onto the wood and you have to bleach them off and then I've got this uh, cauliflower looking uh, fungus which I actually scraped out the day or so before before you arrived because I sort of thought well I've got used to it but not everybody <laughs> likes it growing on the boat so uh, yeah I don't think it's true uh, I, I think there's a lot to be said for um, glass fibre hull we're not springing any planks here mm. and uh, but a good supply of wood and um, the spars and masts all, all Douglas fir and have served me very very well e even though I did break the mast once what you do is you can just scarp it, glue it, strap it back together and uh, you can't you can't do that with every every type of mast. Gerald tell me how long did it take you to sail this boat from Harwich on the east coast to Stornoway? That was rather a long time I left um, I left Harwich in I think it was July 2006 and uh, v very very slowly made my way up the east coast um, I had two, I'd taken two years off so I wasn't in a hurry <laughs> which might be the best way to do a passage plan. So I tended to linger I everywhere I went, I t uh, particularly Whitby. I remember uh, calling into Whitby and um, I had to be prized out of Whitby. Why was that? Well, the, um, the, the, the social life of an evening. Well, fish and chips, okay, the fish and chips. <laughs> uh, and the sort of people that haul up there, the yachtsmen that haul up there and the boats that haul up there. But it's something about the place. Everyone's very really friendly. Um, you've got to get through the bridge together at the same time and leave at the same time. Yeah, so the fish and chips, but the uh, just just the, the the atmosphere in the town, the the music in the town pubs was was just incredible. It's just wonderful. It was just like full on party every night, not just Saturdays, but every night. So yeah, I had a lot of trouble leaving Whitby. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you solo, Gerald? On most this? of the way. Oh, yeah. yeah, most of the way. For from I left left Harwich on my own, and then I got to Southwold, and the weather north beasterlies. Uh, northeasterlies, very unpleasant uh, on the east coast, and that set in at Southwold. So I was I stayed there for a, again a couple of weeks, but that was stomping home stomping ground. So I didn't have any trouble staying there. And then I managed to enlist one young chap who was just keen to go sailing, but didn't really have any experience. And a friend of mine, Graham, I can't think of Graham's second name, but he's he sails with the old gaffers, the OGA on the yeah. east coast, and quite a quite a capable sailor and a uh, damn good fiddle player and really good company and he was meant to be on passage on some boat down in Cornwall but it uh, something went wrong it didn't go and so he, he came came and joined me and so we set off from um, uh, Southwold with the intention of going well all the, all the way to um, Whitby in, in one, one passage, a night passage but the way things turned out we called into Great Yarmouth had a Good night in Great Yarmouth, and then set off fresh for Whitby the following day. So some of it I had crew, and um, my partner Sue crewed for us for some of it. Now you're here in Stornoway. Uh, do you have any particular destinations you plan to go to, or is there just enough anchorages oh, around and about? Does me. I I'd taken two years off. I, if I can just tell you a little bit about that, I um, it was between over my fiftieth birthday, so forty-nine to fifty-one. 
and um, I sort of basically sold up, moved on to the boat. Family had grown up and things like that, so didn't have great deals or responsibility. Okay, okay, I'll serve Sorry, ferry, ferry coming in. They'll, they'll chat away for a little while. I'll try and talk over them. And um, yeah, so I decided I was going to take two years off, and I thought that was a good time, 49 to 51. And partly the reason was um, people I knew, like my local landlord, people still and and just people my age of, uh, in a similar industry, I was in the printing industry. They were just and, dropping uh, dead. <laughs> I decided that I would be really annoyed if I suddenly dropped dead and hadn't done something. <laughs> so I thought, well, what? let's sail around Britain. Then. I'll sail around Britain in a leisurely style. and uh, Which is more or less what I did. And with Stornoway, or with the Isle of Lewis, uh, I'd been up to the Isle of Lewis and I was looking to move anyway. And I'd been looking at places where I could possibly move to, uh, Northumberland and places. But everywhere I went, I thought, oh, it's near a city, or it's near a motorway, or there's a printing press nearby, or, you know, and I kept thinking, oh, Lewis doesn't have that, the Isle of Lewis doesn't have that. And so I thought, well, that's People don't drop dead there. Yeah, well, they, I suppose, that, no, they do, but they, <laughs> I, I don't think they drop dead as regularly. <laughs> And I just thought, that's the place. It's got all the things that I don't want to do. You know, I don't want to be stuck on the M25 anymore. I just don't want to be, And you never get in a traffic jam. I don't want to be in a city. I don't want to be in a motorway. I don't want to be anywhere near a printing press. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 